Hello again in Anime Realm, this is my recap for the anime I parry everything. If you dig my recaps, don't forget to subscribe and smash that notification bell. The story kicks off in the Clay's kingdom up in the northwest. We meet our main dude Nor, who's whipping up some medicine for his sick mom. His mom drinks that stuff, and she's grateful, giving props to Nor for always holding her down. Nor tells her he's gonna go feed the sheep real quick, and his mom asks him to swear he won't step outside the barrier. He does so and says that he'll bring back some fruits and rabbit meat to make soup. But then his mama starts coughing like crazy, and Nor gets all worried. He tells her he'll boil some water for her, but his mama stops him. She wipes off the dirt from her hardworking son's face, and with a heavy heart, she apologizes for not being able to give him much. She tells him he deserves to choose his own path in life. Next, we see Nor whipping up that soup at night with the rabbit meat and fruits he gathered. When it's ready, he takes it to his mama. He tries to wake her up, but she ain't responding. It hits him hard to find out she's gone. So he digs a grave for his mom right next to his dad's resting place, and he cries silently. After that, Nor spends his time hunting for food, taking care of his cattle, keeping his house in order, and reading some books. Every day passes with him sticking to these routines, and he feels hella lonely when he ain't busy. One day, he comes across an old book in his house. As he reads it, he remembers it's the same book his dad used to read to him back in the day. His dad used to tell him about adventurers, how they could break curses in creepy forests, study magic to become badass wizards, team up to take down massive monsters, and even score an all-curing elixir from the Spirit King. No matter what kind of crisis they faced, they fought to protect the weak, their crew, and straight up obliterate evil. That got Nor all hyped, and he kept bugging his dad for more stories about them. Back in the present, Nor remembers his mom telling him to decide how he wants to live his life. So he starts thinking about becoming an adventurer. The next day, he lays out a ton of feed for his cattle, says his goodbyes to his mom and dad, and lets them know he's heading to the city on his first trip to become an adventurer. With a bit of hesitation, he steps outside the barrier around his house. After days of traveling all alone, he finally makes it to the city. He enters the city and asks the gate guards for directions to the guild, and they point him in the right direction. Once he's in the city, he's all wide-eyed like a country bumpkin seeing crazy new stuff for the first time, and everything gets him hyped. He heads over to the adventurer's guild, but the guild master tries to brush him off, saying it ain't no place for kids, but Nor ain't having it. He tells the guild master that the gatekeeper sent him here because he wants to become an adventurer. The guild master tries to talk some sense into him, saying he's making a dumb decision and his parents would be worried sick. But Nor drops the bomb that both his parents are already dead. When asked for his name, he introduces himself. The guild master mentions that Nor should start by going to the training school if he wants to be an adventurer. But he warns him that it might be tough since they never had a candidate as young as him. Nor asks what the training school is all about, and the guild master explains that everyone who wants to join the Royal Capitals Adventurers Guild gotta pick a training school. He'll have to choose his adventurer class there and train up, learning all sorts of useful skills to be a real adventurer. Now Nor being a country bumpkin has no clue about skills. The guild master breaks it down, saying they talking about sword techniques, magic, and all that kind of stuff. This gets Nor all hyped and the scene switches to him at a swordsman training school. He's thinking he gonna be like some hero who can take down a dragon the size of a freaking mountain with one swing. He starts training in swordsmanship, and one by one, the other students start unlocking some sick sword skills. Nor keeps training, but he's low-key jealous watching them. Fast forward a few months, and we see everyone else making progress, but Nor is still struggling. He keeps training, but his instructor tells him to quit, but Nor wants to keep training more. But the instructor shuts him down, saying he'd just be wasting his time. According to the instructor, Nor is a talentless loser who's only learned how to parry. He straight up tells Nor to find another path, and suggests checking out the other training schools to unlock his potential. So Nor decides to give the warrior school a shot. Thinking it's cool because he can be on the front lines protecting his crew, he goes through some hardcore training there, but still, he ain't making any progress. After training for several months, his instructor straight up tells him to bounce, because all he managed to do was buff himself up a bit with physical enhancement. The instructor warns him that he gonna end up dead if he keeps pushing down this path, so Nor decides to give the hunter training school a shot, but he fails there too. The instructor straight up tells him he ain't cut out for delicate tools like bows. Nor ain't letting that stop him though. He tries his luck at the magician training school next, but even after all that training, 
All he can do is cast a weak flame that can barely light a freaking candle. He ain't done yet, though Nor heads to the thieves' training school. But no matter how hard he tries, he can't get the hang of disarming traps, picking locks, or detecting presences, so he's gotta quit that too. It's one fail after another. Finally, Nor gives the cleric training school a shot. But no luck there either. After months of training, all he can do is a basic healing spell that can treat some scrapes. He then heads back disappointed to the guild, and the guildmaster is shocked to learn that he couldn't learn a single damn thing even after all that training. The guildmaster straight up tells him he ain't got what it takes to be an adventurer. So this talentless loser leaves the city in disappointment, heading back to his house. He tells his parents that he ain't got no talent for adventuring, but he ain't giving up. He's determined to try harder than anyone else. He crafts himself a wooden sword, remembering what his sword instructor told him about his one skill potentially turning into something else if he keeps honing it. So he focuses on his parry skill, training day and night, dedicating his life to it. A year passes by, and we find out Norris trained his parry skill to deflect 10 swords at once. He ain't developed any new skills yet, but he feels like he's moving forward. Three more years pass, and now he can parry a hundred swords at once but still no new skills, but our boy ain't giving in. He keeps training non-stop, breaking his sword in the process, and healing his scratches with his weak healing skill. Fast forward 10 more years, and now Nor can parry a thousand swords at once. He realizes he hasn't missed a single day of training in the past 14 years, but he still ain't learned a damn new skill yet. The next day, Nor decides to hit up the city once again, and the scene cuts to him at the Adventurer's Guild. The Guild staff checks out his skills, Parry, Physical Enhancement, Stone Throw, Feather Step, Tiny Flame, and Low Heal. She wonders if he's really sure about registering with these weak-ass skills. She starts talking about the training school system and how it can level up his skills, but Nor says that he already studied under all of them already. This puts the girl on the spot, and she don't know what to say. Nor peeps the situation and realizes he ain't gonna be able to join the guild. He wonders if there's truly no way for him to get in. Then the guild master rolls up and he has a hard time recognizing the grown-up Nor. But after a good look, he figures it out. Nor spills about what he's been up to all this time, and the guild master can't believe that after all that training, all Nor got is a slightly stronger parry. The guild master breaks it down for Nor, saying adventurers are ranked from S, the strongest, to E, the weakest. To register as an E-ranked adventurer, you gotta have at least one useful skill. But Nor doesn't even got that. Nor starts thinking it might be time to give up on his dream if that's the case, but the guildmaster tells him it ain't completely hopeless yet. He mentions there's a legendary rank below E that not many people know about. Nor gets all hyped because he can join as an F-ranked adventurer, but the guildmaster lays down some conditions. He says Nor won't be able to take no hunting or gathering jobs outside the city. He'll only be able to do odd jobs within the city's limits. He thinks Nor might not be down for it since it's meant for beggars to put food on the table. But Nor agrees to join the guild as an F-ranked adventure anyway. The guildmaster is hella surprised, but he registers Nor when he insists. Nor is stoked to get his adventurer card and starts taking on odd jobs around the city. He completes them one by one, using his weak-ass skills, and keeps up his sword training on the side. Days are flying by as Nor keeps lending a hand to people all over the city. One day, he's chilling by a fire, and it hits him he's finally living his dream becoming an adventurer who helps others. He knows his skill set ain't gonna get him much more, so he keeps hustling odd jobs around the city. One day, he steps up to help an old lady clean her nasty drains, and she's all grateful for his constant help. Then he lands a job at a construction site, and when he wraps up work, he spots a glow coming from a cave, along with cries for help. Nor bolts to the cave as fast as he can and sees a freaking minotaur about to take out a girl. Turns out she got some knights trying to protect her, but damn they stand no chance against that gigantic beast. The monster wipes out the captain of the knights with a single blow, then proceeds to massacre the others like squishing bugs. Bloods flooding the whole area, and the girl's straight up horrified. The minotaur sets its sights on the girl, but Nor uses his rock throw skill to divert the monster's attention to himself. The minotaur starts chasing Nor, lunges at him, but he manages to parry its attack. The minotaur keeps coming at him, and Nor keeps parrying every damn attack, but with each move, his sword takes a beating. Nor knows he needs to find an opening, but he also knows he ain't got the offensive skills to take down the Minotaur, even if he finds one. He notices the girl's still there, and when the Minotaur tries to attack her again, 
he busts out his feather step skill and rushes in to save her, wrecking his sword in the process. He figures, even if he can't be the top tier adventurer, he's gotta hold it down for the girl right in front of him. He recalls his old man's words about the true meaning of being an adventurer. The Minotaur swings at him once more, but Nor parries like a boss. This time, the Minotaur's axe slips from its hands, and boom, the axe beheads the monster. Nor realizes if the fight had gone on any longer, he'd be six feet under, so it hits him again how much talent he lacks. The girl thanks him for saving her life and asks for his name, but Nor says he ain't worth remembering and bounces. Some knights show up to rescue the girl, and we see Nor back in town. He can't believe he almost got taken out by a random cow roaming in the streets, and he's dead set on training even harder. A while later, a cleanup crew rolls up to move the Minotaur's ass out of there, along with all the folks who died trying to fight it, and Princess Lin feels hella guilty about all the deaths. Right then, her knight ins comes rushing up and apologizes for not sticking by her side when she went into the damn dungeon, because it's her job to protect Lin. But Lin tells her it ain't her damn fault. This was just some basic ass trial for the throne succession, so it wouldn't make sense to force her knight to tag along. Just then another knight tells Lin they're gonna head back to the castle soon because Lord Rain wanna have a chat with her, and she already knows what that shit gonna be about. Back at the castle, Lord Rain just finished talking to Lin trying to understand what the hell happened, but none of it making sense to him. The only way a minotaur could end up in that part of the dungeon is if someone straight up summoned it with magic, and the knight agrees with that assumption. He thinks the whole incident got something to do with a merchant found dead at the scene with a ring and when they checked it out, they realized the damn magic stone in the ring got a crazy high level of purity, something you don't normally see on the market. A minotaur ain't no joke, it's an A-level demon. So no random rich dude could just buy something that can control one. Plus, the crest on the ring suggests it came from the magical empire of Doritas. So Rain think the Doritas people are behind this shit because they always had beef with him. But even then, the fact that they straight up tried to assassinate Lin and didn't even bother getting rid of the evidence, it gotta mean they trying to bait Rain into starting a war so they can take over the damn dungeon. Aside from that, Rain also gotta think about the guide who saved Lin. According to the reports, dude managed to whoop the Minotaur's ass in seconds with just a broken sword. And on top of that, the castle spies tried to tail him when he was leaving. But the dude straight up vanished right before their damn eyes. Rain can't believe what the hell he's hearing. So he is hella curious about finding out who this mysterious warrior is. Meanwhile, Nor just rolled back into the damn guild, and the guild master looking hella surprised because he thought Nor got himself killed. He heard about a demon popping up in the dungeon, and that shit was right next to the construction site where Nor was working, so he figured Nor must have bit the dust. Nor apologizes for causing worry and explains that he had some shady folks tailing him last night so he had to shake them off and went home without reporting what happened. The guildmaster saying Nor is lucky to be alive because a minotaur is a damn demon so strong that even an rank adventurer would get insta killed if they had to face it. Nor is still clueless about the fact that the guildmaster talking about the same damn creature he slayed. So he asks what happened to this demon, and the guildmaster tells him some mysterious dude took it down. Nor still ain't connecting the dots and just goes on with reporting the jobs he finished today. The guild master hands over his payment, but reminds Nor he is better off getting a regular ass job because he'd make more dough that way. But Nor doesn't give a damn about the money, long as he gets to be an adventurer. Right then, Lin sneaks up behind Nor and says she is damn glad she finally found him. She apologizes for invading his privacy, but she really wanted to meet him again so she used her long-distance detection skill to track him down, nor assuming she must be some thief-class adventurer if she got a detection skill. But Lin says she actually a magician. She just has skills in all kinds of classes, even if they are basic. The guild master and the other folks in the guild start recognizing Lin, so she asks if she and Nor can talk outside. But before they can leave, the guild master grabs Nor and asks what the hell he did to make Lin want to talk to him. Nor says he ain't done no illegal shit meaning he ain't in no damn trouble. So the guild master tells him to go with Lin and make sure he don't do nothing stupid. Outside, Lin uses one of her skills to cloak herself and nor so nobody can see them. And once they find a secluded spot, Lin apologizes again for intruding on Nor. Knowing a dude with his power probably got a lot on his plate, Nor says it's all good, and Lin starts off by thanking him once again for what he did because not only did he save her life, 
but he also saved a whole bunch of people in the nation. Nor ain't thinking he deserves all that hype because all he did was take down a damn cow. Hell, he's pretty damn sure Lin could have handled it on her own if he hadn't shown up. No clue how he came to that conclusion when he saw that same cow slaughtering a bunch of knights. So Lin tries to make him understand that she would have been six feet under if he hadn't come to rescue her. Nor still ain't think he did much to help her, but he accepts her thanks. But then Lin talks about offering him a reward to show her gratitude for his help. Nor straight up tells her that a simple thank you is all he needs, so she doesn't gotta give him nothing else. Lin keeps insisting on giving Nor a reward, and now her old man wanna meet him too. But Nor deadass don't want any damn reward. Lin tries one more time to get him to accept, but Nor standing his ground with his no reward policy. Lin getting desperate, asking if there's anything she can do for him or if she can even get him his own territory, but Nor just says he doesn't want none of it. Lin starts crying and telling Nor he gotta accept her gratitude, and she ain't moving from this spot till Nor says he'll accept something from her. Nor remembers a time when he pulled this same tantrum move to get a cleric to train him. And because he doesn't want Lin standing here for hours, he ends up agreeing to meet her old man, but he still doesn't want no fancy ass gifts. Lin is happy as hell to hear that. So she says Nora should stick close to her, and she'll use her concealment skills to make sure nobody spots them. Eventually, Nor brought to Lin's house. And as he gets led inside, Lin asks for his name, which Nor is happy to provide. But Nor is still clueless about who Lin is, so she apologizes for being rude and straight up introduces herself as Lindbergh Clays. But damn that name is way too damn long, so she usually goes by Lin. Once Nor peeps this house, he finally get why Lin wasn't kidding about being wealthy. It all makes sense why the guild master was sweating bullets about him making a fool of himself. While they strolling, they bump into inns, and Lin is hella happy to see her. So she runs over and asks where her old man is. Inns tells her he is in a meeting with Rain right now, so he is a little busy. But aside from that, she is curious about the dude standing over there. Lin explains that Nor is the one who saved her life, so In says she'll lead them to Lin's dad. Nor ain't never heard of a royal knight, so he figures Inns must be some kind of homemade knight. One of the folks who loves rocking armor for some weird reason. He also notices that Inns ain't too fond of him, but he got no clue why. While they strolling, they come across this dude chilling by the window. Soon as he spots them, he gets up and asks what Inns up to, and who the hell this random guy is. Inns tells Gilbert to put his damn spear away because Nor is Lin's guest, and it ain't cool to be pointing weapons at guests. Gilbert catches on that Nor must be the dude who saved Lin's life. So he lowers his weapon. Inns asks him to join them in the room because she could use all the support. Gilbert already got a bad vibe about Nor, and Nor can sense that things ain't looking too good for him at this rate, but he keeps on walking. In the throne room, the king is in the middle of a meeting with Rain, and he is hella pissed because it's clear that Doritas doesn't give a damn about honoring their peace treaty. Rain been expecting this shit ever since the last meeting with the king of Doritas, when he straight up demanded they hand over the rights to the dungeon. Obviously the demand got rejected, but ever since then, the king of Doritas has been plotting their downfall. Right then, Lin and the crew show up in the throne room, and Lin is all hyped up and goes over to greet her brother and dad. Inns and Gilbert kneel to show respect for the king, but Nor just keeps on walking. Rain notices that Lin wearing that disguise cloak, meaning she must have snuck out without permission. But she says she had no other way to find the man who saved her. The king realizes she talking about Nor, and Nor apologizes for showing up looking all messy. But Lin insists on coming here as soon as possible. He also mentions he ain't no fancy aristocrat or nothing, so he ain't familiar with all the proper etiquette for these kind of situations, so he might accidentally say something rude. But the king tells him it's all good because it's easier to speak without worrying about etiquette. The king reaches out his hand to Nor and formally thanks him for saving Lin's life. Nor brushes it off, saying it ain't no biggie, so a simple thank you is plenty. But the king ain't letting Nor off the hook without a proper reward. He tells Nor he can ask for any amount of cash or land he wants, but Nor still doesn't want nothing. The king is taken aback, but he ups the ante by offering Nor half of all the treasures they snagged from the dungeon. Rain thinks a reward like that is hella too much to be given to just one dude, but Nor still ain't feeling it though. The king doesn't know what the hell to give Nor because he keeps shooting down everything. So he goes over to his throne and grabs the sword hanging on it as a gift for Nor. Rain doesn't think it's a dope idea to give away such a valuable sword, but the king says it's cool because he never uses it anymore, and ain't nobody gonna find out as long as he swaps it with a fake. He hands it to Nor, and as soon as it's in Nor's hand, 
he can feel how damn heavy it is. From Rain's reaction, Nor can tell that this sword is worth mad bucks, and he ain't down to accept no extravagant gifts. But the king says it's just something he picked up back in his adventuring days, so it's all good for Nor to take it. Nor agrees, so the king asks him to give it a test swing. Nor goes along with it and swings the sword in the air, unleashing a crazy amount of force and surprising everyone around. The king props Nor up for swinging the sword with just one hand, but he's got a request too. He wants Nor to help train Lin on how to be an adventurer. But Nor says there ain't nothing he could possibly teach someone as talented as Lin. And besides, Nor thinks Lin should be the one to decide something like that for herself. After that, Nor figures it's time for him to leave. And as he's leaving, he realizes something special about his sword. It's the perfect shape to fit in the gutters he usually cleans, so he's gonna give it a try tomorrow morning. Before he bounces, Inns rolls up on him and says she wants to chat. First off, she apologizes for her rude behavior earlier, because it was completely uncalled for. But Nor says he doesn't mind at all. Her job is to protect the Clay's family no matter what. So she's hella grateful to Nor for saving Lin's life, and to show her appreciation. She promises to have Nor's back if he ever needs help. Nor doesn't want to go back and forth about this, so he just accepts her offer and says he'll hit her up if he ever needs anything. On another note, Inns also warns Nor that he better not talk to the king so casually again. Because even if the king let it slide this time, she ain't gonna let that disrespect fly next time. Nor says he gets it. So Inns in a good mood and asks him for his name. When she hears his name is Nor, she seems hella shocked. Nor asks if he did something wrong again. But Inns says it's nothing and leaves. Nor is about to leave too. But he gets stopped by Gilbert who wants to throw down and challenge him to a fight. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.